Hey, hey, everybody, it's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update from Japan and just hang in there with me for about 15 minutes. I'm going to have a very hard look at this complaint by the SEC and go through a thought process that I want you to join me in doing. I warned you also that there would be noise. Don't waste your energy on these kinds of distractions. It's not only sucking your energy, but it's consuming your precious time. Of course, be aware, don't ignore, but be very cognizant of how this noise can take your eye off the goal. The goal right now for XRP holders should be to seek the facts. Pay attention to only the facts. Too often, we base our choices on what we rather believe than what actually exist. And we don't have all the facts. In fact, to make an informed decision or opinion of the SEC complaint is far too premature. David confirms that the advice from the attorneys representing Ripple have a muzzle on the situation. And as he says, it sucks. He writes, early next week, I'll run what I'd like to say about this specifically by our legal team, but I suspect they'll tell me that it will have to wait until we file our formal response. Yeah, what he hates most about the lawsuits is the fact that you can't speak freely. And be careful with your emotions. They can be debilitating, especially when it comes to making decisions and choices. And here we have attorney Jesse Hines. He makes my next point very clear. Those statements and sales and such, he's talking about what was in the complaint, were included to get an emotional reaction as they have literally nothing to do with the securities lawsuit. The SEC has not sued for fraud. They have not sued for market manipulation. They have sued only to clarify XRP as a security and with those damages. Emotions can sometimes be useful when implementing a choice. However, it is always best to keep emotions out of the process of making a choice. And I'm referring to what you're going to do as an XRP hodler. Those that are taking this long position on the digital asset, it's very tough right now. You want to make a decision. Being in limbo is not comfortable. Hodlers, we always wanted clarity. And it is clarity we're going to get. That's the way it is shaping up. Not in the way we thought it was going to happen, which takes me to my next point. Expect more of the unexpected. Prepare your mind. Being prepared means you're going to have less shock and you're going to have less emotion. What do I mean by this? I'm going to give you three examples. Having some rinky dink talking head trying to look bold by saying XRP won't be in the top 10 by the end of 2021. Yeah, you need to expect more of these kinds of tweets because the world is full of narcissists who live to be in the spotlight. And as Rand says, no doubt that either way, this tweet will haunt me. Come on. That's what he wants. He wants to continue to be in the limelight with this tweet. Social scientists research. They have shown us over and over again that these personalities believe they are constructing and managing their image to do so, and they do it with obsession. They have what has been defined as superiority complex. Lin Q of Singapore's Nanyang Technical University did the research and said that if you really want to look into someone's heart, your best bet is to look at their Twitter feed. Using a software program called Linguistics Inquiry and Word Count, they can spot these kinds of behavior, and it's just quite clear that they do exist. Number two, expect many people to give up on XRP, people you'd never expected to do so. This space is not for everyone. I know 
People want to believe that they are cut out for the rough times, but I'm sorry to tell you it's not true. I saw the fallout in 2018, and it's okay. Just expect it. I'm not only talking about people on social media. I'm even going to go as far as talking about key Ripple employees. Expect it. Yeah, I even have to hand it to Tone Vase. When Bitcoin hit its 3000 and some price, it didn't shake him out. I have to say, I'm impressed. Number three, expect some very big power plays. What we're talking about here is who is going to control the flow of global money. Expect the likes of the most powerful to maneuver geopolitically and with a lot of betrayal. Expect it and expect a lot of casualties. I want to replay you this clip from Jay Clayton and it is very apparent that he had backers. I know he's out now, but those backers are still very active. They are in play and expect they will still have a silent say in this administration going forward. I want you to listen carefully to just 56 seconds. Here we go. You know, comply with the securities laws, but, you know, push the technology forward. And the area that um, is particular uh, of particular interest to me and many of those regulators that, that Gary mentioned is the payment system. We all recognize that our payment system is inefficient. Uh, domestically, it's inefficient. Internationally, it's extremely inefficient. So if we don't work and use technology to address those inefficiencies, the market is going to do it for us. And I think we'll, we'll like the outcome much better if we as regulators proactively enter that payment space, um, ensuring that all the time, um, all the time proven safeguards around AML, bank secrecy, anti-terrorism and the like are there. Um, so I, I, see, I see significant promise going forward, Glenn. So what's particular interest to him and the many regulators is payments, that payments system. And yeah, we all know it's inefficient. And if the SEC doesn't do something, as he says, the market, which is the private sector, which is Ripple, is going to do that for them. Do you think he is on board with that? He says that we'll like the outcome much better if we regulators proactively enter that payment space. He's doing it under the disguise of ensuring KYC and AML safeguards. And did you catch the other reason? He's citing the bank secrecy. This is the Bank Secrecy Act or the BSA that was passed in 1970. It requires all banks to cooperatively work with the government to report suspicious behavior, money laundering, tax evasion, etc. From 2008 to 2018, there were $26 billion in fines. In fact, a near record $10 billion worth of fines in a 15-month period ended in 2019. And breaking down 2020 so far in October, the three banks with the biggest fines are coming from the United States, Goldman Sachs, Wells Fargo, and J.P. Morgan Chase. In September, 2020, Ripple posted a job, this ad, looking for a BSA research analyst to monitor, monitor activity on the XRP ledger. So to monitor, to analyze, to investigate. We know that Ripple was engaging with the SEC. At this time, they posted this job, job post. In hindsight, obviously, it was trying to appease Clayton because with that public public statement, 
and his desire to have a hand in the payments activity, it's quite clear. And remember, Ripple doesn't own the XRP ledger. And the users of the ledger are not customers of Ripple always. Is this a problem? Well, in this case, maybe you have to decide. Matty Greenspan, he tweets that the SEC didn't kill XRP, that tribalism did. No, Maddie, your tribal comment shows how deep in the well you really are. Again, everyone, I repeat, beware, aware of the noise, especially from those seeking attention on Twitter. And back to Jesse Hines, the New Jersey attorney who is following these developments. Here's his real opinion. Stop focusing on the SEC, focus on Congress. We need well thought out legislation setting the stage for federal agencies, not the other way around. If we continue to allow federal agencies to each promulgate rules, which means to, to enact, to promote, to put into force, the result is a piecemeal enforcement. So there is a petition that's floating around out there. It's trying to get 100,000 signatures by the end of January, January 28th. And it is just going to then get some sort of official response or acknowledgement of the petition. It needs another 96,070 signatures as of just a couple of hours ago. And I want to point out that Jesse thinks, yeah, it's a wonderful idea, but this is misguided. This is not something that's going to effectuate change, according to his tweet. Even the U.S. had the highest turnout in over a century in the last presidential election, but still 33% of the eligible, eligible voters didn't vote. So I don't know exactly what Jesse's thoughts are on why it's misguided, but I think that this tactic is not strong enough. And I want to just point out that XRP Darren just used this quote in his recent video. And it's so true. Strategy without tactics is the slowest route to victory. Tactics without strategy is the noise before defeat. The clever combatant looks to affect the change by combining the energy. Winning armies have the same spirit throughout each rank. So the tactic that is going to be used to effectuate change could come from the XRP community because there is a lot of combined synergy. The power of a message also using social media uh, across many platforms reaches much deeper than a letter or an email, in my opinion. It needs to educate, clearly communicate the reason for action, and convince the audience that, in this case, Congress, must act now. People are lazy. So if it's possible to use video, I think that is very effective. It should also fit inside as many platforms as possible. And I'm talking even TikTok and Instagram. So keeping the message at 60 seconds or less is probably the most effective way to do it when you talk about sharing across multiple platforms. According to the Pew Research, Congress is soaring to new heights on social media. Engagements on Facebook and Twitter, the metrics are impressive, dramatically increasing. The Democrats are most active on Twitter, and there is about the same amount of engagement on Facebook as of May 2020. So patience, yeah, is a virtue. 
And don't get that mixed up with procrastination. That is giving away your power. I want to use social media and the power that it has to push for change. And should you prefer to take action, but not quite ready to put yourself out there, DM me your 60 second script. DM me on Twitter and we'll go from there. I'll do my best to get that message out. And if I just share with you my new year message with you, as the water shapes itself to the vessel that contains it, a wise man should adapt himself to circumstances. So when it's obvious that goals cannot be reached, do not adjust the goals, adjust the action steps. This Confucius approach to 2021 may be of value to you. So if you're wondering where the fluff is, the whole video was fluff. This Confucius approach to life is something that is very much embraced in Japan. I talk about how Mr. Kitao of SBI is a scholar when it comes to the Chinese classics. And the Confucius philosophy is very much a part of that study. So this whole video gave you very much this approach that I hope will help you through the new year. All right, everybody. Do take care. Sayonara for now. Bye-bye.